Hi everybody, welcome to this live edition of The Sewing Report. We are live in my very own craft room. I know, I know. We keep changing the scene every week, and I am Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. We try to do this every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, so wherever you are, you're welcome to join me any week. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day to my mom. I don't know if she watches the show, but mom, if you are, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. And we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this week. I kind of, so here's the thing, I kind of thought there's a few things going on in the sewing news community that I thought needed to be talked about. So we're going to talk about it. Um, I want to get your thoughts and opinions and feel free to leave me a comment. Let me see if I can see the comments. Okay, got it. See all, I can see all your messages here. We're going back to basics. I'm doing the show alone this week since James had to go to the grocery store. I know, I know. Priorities here. And so we're going to go over a couple news stories, and I want to see what everyone's opinion is. And then I'm going to show you some random stuff that I've been making that honestly didn't really, I think, fit into, like, its own video. So I'm going to show those with you, show those to you, and share some tips. Oh, hey, Doherty. All right, Doherty made it here. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. We've got Patty. Happy Mother's Day to you and all the other moms who happen to be watching. Champagne Twist, awesome. Got some folks here. And if you enjoy these types of videos, feel free to smash that like button and leave me a comment. Also, for those of you watching on the replay, welcome also. So I'm going to share some tips with you on uh, some pattern making things. I know I'm very scientific. I know. But uh, let's let's get into it. And at the end of this show, I'm actually going to have a couple announcements that I want to share with you just about what's going to happen to this show in the next upcoming weeks. All right, Taishia is here. Anitra, Anitra, and Anitra, I heard you got a new cover stitch machine, which is awesome. I really hope you like it as much as I like mine so far. And there's a link if you're interested in the Junomi Cover Pro 1000 CPX. There's a link to it in the description box. I'm going to be making a bunch of videos about the machine how to use it, some tips, some things I've figured out by playing around with it. Can't wait to get in the mail. Awesome. And Anitra, the folks at Pink Castle Fabrics actually emailed me as well to let me know that you had reached out to them. And we're all very excited. I love the people at Pink Castle Fabrics. So if you're not familiar, check them out, pinkcastlefabrics.com. They've got a lot of great stuff. And they're a an exclusive, or not an exclusive, they're an authorized Junomi dealership. I know, exclusive. There are a lot of Janome dealerships, but there's really only one, Pink Castle Fabrics. So definitely check them out because they are helping to support and share the mission that we here at Sewing Report have, which is to help people learn how to love sewing because it's such an amazing thing. So we're going to talk about a few things that I saw in headlines this week. And you know as well as I do that sewing doesn't really get a lot of exposure in newspapers, on TV, that sort of thing. It sort of gets lost by the wayside. Uh, but this week, there's been a couple things that I saw floating around. The first is that Craftsy has been bought by NBC Universal, or NBC Universal is buying Craftsy, which is really very, very interesting to me. And here's why NBC Universal, huge media news entertainment company, they have so many resources, a lot of money. And it's, I don't think you realize how much stuff NBC Universal owns. They actually own a lot of cable networks. I don't know exactly how many, but they own more than just the NBC or MSNBC or CNBC. I think they own Bravo and probably a few other networks that you, you probably aren't even aware that of the tie-in. So they're a really huge company. And Craftsy, I was kind of digging around once and trying to see what was up with Craftsy. I know, right? That's kind of crazy. So Craftsy was actually started by like some Silicon Valley tech guys. Like if you didn't know any better, you'd think Craftsy was started by like some some women or something, but actually it was started by, you know, some some Silicon Valley tech type people like, you know, like I don't know, Chris Socker or like Ashton Kutcher, those kind of guys that hang out in Silicon Valley and have tons boatloads of money. So the one guy who started Craftsy, I guess his mom was into quilting. So that's why Craftsy was so heavy on the quilting. Now, Craftsy is a website and they have an app 
They sell online classes and lots of supplies, and they have some free classes to get people started with it, and there's a link to Craftsy below in the description box. And I discovered Craftsy probably about two to three years ago, and a lot of these uh, content providers are going to more of like a subscription-based model. Like, you know, there's a lot of YouTube creators that ask people to support them via Patreon or, you know, other sites like that. Um, there's YouTube Red, there's Hulu, there's Netflix. But Craftsy, I think, is interesting because they decided to go for paying per class. So instead of paying like $19.95 a month, you pay $20 for a class. And I will say the Craftsy classes are pretty extensive. Like for one class, you may get 7 to 10 different video lessons for hours of instruction. So I have actually personally found a lot of the Craftsy classes to be helpful. And even the free ones haven't been, they've been pretty worthwhile. So, and um, also I, I think they have like some QuiltCon lecture panels from years past on there. So it's a pretty interesting site if you haven't checked it out already. But here's why I think it's so important that NBC bought Craftsy. NBC, I think, sees the potential and value in our space, which is kind of huge. Uh, the, oh, yes, shop NBC. So, like, there's NBC has its hands in so many business. I think they also own stakes in BuzzFeed and some other, like, new media type companies. But personally, I was very encouraged to hear about this because it means that NBC does see that Craftsy is a valuable entity. So, whatever gets more exposure to our neck of the woods, I'm, I'm totally cool with. I think that's awesome. And hopefully, maybe, maybe NBC hopes. I, I was reading that, and I was reading an article, and I've linked a couple articles below if you want to check them out. I think the Denver Post article was talking about how NBC sees Craftsy as sort of a space to be able to compete with Netflix. A lot of people watch Netflix for entertainment purposes, and Netflix also has documentaries. But I personally think that offering educational materials in that way could also become very Netflix-like. Um, the reason, one of the reasons I like sewing is because you're learning something, you're not just like sitting there like a vegetable, binge watching 80 episodes of House of Cards. You're learning a skill, you're sharpening your mind, and that's what I personally love about sewing. So I think that's huge. What do you think about this purchase? Do you think it's gonna change Craftsy at all? Keaton Quilts, hello? I mean, do you think this is gonna change what Craftsy looks like? Or do you think this might create more opportunities for people like us in the making space? I, I think I see it going that way. I hope this doesn't change affect their fabric prices and kits. Crystal, yes, I think that would be a good thing too because I don't want... They have fantastic prices on fabrics and their sewing kits, the prices are awesome. So hopefully they don't get rid of the... Like, I would hope they wouldn't stop selling the products because that's actually one of the main reasons I go to Craftsy now. I already have a ton of Craftsy classes, and I haven't even gotten to, like, a third of them. Yes, I, Anitra, I think the business model is great, too, and Keaton Quilts thinks it's great as well. And uh, and that's the thing. If more and more media companies get an interest in the making space, I feel like maybe Craftsy or, you know, maybe some other company could maybe elevate what we do so it's more on like HGTV level. Like do you remember like 10 or 20 years ago? Yes, it, I wish there was a TV channel dedicated to just crafts and sewing. That would that would be amazing and because I think we could get on the same train as like HGTV and then crafting and sewing could become as popular. Because now everyone loves watching those shows like Flip or Flop, Property Brothers, Love It or List It. And they're, you know, even if people don't do DIY, they're very familiar with DIY content. And I think that's what I'd like to see for sewing. Even if people don't sew themselves, if they're at least more aware of what sewing is really like, there are so many incorrect stereotypes about sewing and quilting. It drives me insane. I miss the sewing bee, says Rachel. And yeah, I heard it got canceled, which is sad. I personally didn't get a chance to watch it because... I'm here. I always become worried when big media companies buy out creative entities, for example, Disney and Star Wars. That's from Champagne Twists. Marie Marie says, go ahead and figure out how to start a channel. Marie, that's what this is. Um, that's why I started this channel was to hopefully help to elevate what we do so people at least are more familiar with it, know what sewing is. They don't think it's just for, you know, specific types of people. I think... Sewing has really been pigeonholed, and I think that's a shame. Patty says, I used to watch Sandra Betsina's shows before I started sewing. 
And I really feel like there needs to be just more sewing content in general. So leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this craftsy thing. If you've heard of it, I think it was kittenish behavior said it's coming back. I really hope, I mean, I really hope there's more sewing shows and more sewing content, quilting content, because I really think that that would help gain exposure for sewing and help introduce it to younger people is mass media. So that's why I personally see NBC buying Craftsy is mostly good. Hopefully they don't stop selling the kits though. So the other story that I saw that's really kind of been very viral this week, and I was personally super psyched, is there is a Houston meteorologist named Lisa Vaughn. She works at Fox 26 in Houston. And Yahoo Style did an article about her, about how she wears a lot of the clothes she makes on air. They linked to a bunch of her Instagram photos. And Lisa's actually been sewing for a pretty long time since she was in college. And she's on Instagram. Check her out at, at @weatherlisa. And as many, many of you might know this, but I also work in the television news industry and that's my real job. And there aren't a lot of fellow sewists or seamstresses there. Let me tell you, hardly anybody, hardly anybody knows. I have not met many people I work with who really know much about sewing. So I was just jazzed to see somebody in the news for sewing who is also a fairly a high profile figure in Houston. So Lisa Vaughn, if you are watching, Rock on. I think your clothing is amazing. She makes all, she's very creative and she makes a lot of um, really out of the box outfits. Like she made like a Britney Spears um, like copycat outfit. She uses a lot of fabrics that I personally um, wouldn't have thought to use, but she makes it looks cool. And someone else just said they hope the sewing bee comes back as well. And here's the thing. I, I appreciate shows like the sewing bee, but I also think, um, there needs to be more something geared towards younger people. Like, I don't personally watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but if someone like that started sewing someone that age, I think that might help jumpstart more people to give it a try. Marie says, Francine and I watch her and a few others in my area on a Saturday morning. That is awesome. So yeah, so Lisa Vaughn, meteorologist at Fox 26 in Houston, she... Oh, and also the Houston Chronicle apparently is going to be doing an article about her and her clothing. She's been picked up by a lot of outlets, which is really, really cool. And um, there's a website a lot of uh, TV journalists follow called TV Spy. And TV Spy on their Facebook page, you can check that out. Uh, just look up TV Spy. They did a Skype interview with Lisa. And one of the questions she was asked was, Oh, you know, do you make a lot of clothing for others? And uh, she actually said... No, I don't like, I hate sewing for other people, which I thought was awesome because it is kind of true. We like sewing things as gifts, but you don't want people to constantly hit you up to make stuff. Champagne Twist says, totally agree. There is a need and a market for more craft content. I'm concerned about the quality though. So, and that is a valid concern. But Lisa Vaughn, I'm excited to see your article in the Houston Cron. But yeah, you need to check out her Skype interview in TV Spy because... Um, they're asking her if she sells stuff, and she's like, no, because they're asking her all those stereotypical questions, because obviously the people at TV Spy know nothing about sewing. And she's like, no, I hate sewing for other people. I don't sell things. I just sew for myself. And she calls her clothing hashtag Lisa Couture. So if you look up the hashtag Lisa Couture, you can find her as well. Marie says, I don't like sewing for other people either. Um, I am late. Someone else, J. Mary Lestone says, I'm late to the party, but I learned cook sewing and cooking in school. Maybe they could make that an elective. And that would be great. I know a lot of school districts are having pretty tight budgets, so a lot of them are doing away with extra programs and curriculums like that. I personally don't have any children, so I'm probably not the best person to ask about that. But um, I actually did learn to sew a little bit in home ec. We had home ec. I was in high school quite a long time ago, though, but, you know, there was there was something for us, and that's how I learned um, a little bit. Rachel says, I wish I knew someone who loves sewing as much as I do. Rachel, you've got all of us here at Sewing Report, so everybody, tell Rachel how much you like sewing, because I think everyone here loves sewing. Okay, Champagne Twist says, this is the thing, people think that you because you sew, you must sell the things you make. I know, right? That's like the worst, that's like the worst stereotype, that and... That, like, the stuff you make is all out of, like, Civil War reproduction fabric. You know, like, they people just have this idea in their head of what sewing is, and it's just not at all accurate of the current 
population of people who sew. There are some people who might fit into that category, but there's a lot more who don't. Oh, and I'm not leaving you hanging. The prom mug is here. I've got some ice water in here. Doherty says, I teach 55 children to sew every week, not at the same time. That would be crazy. That would be insane. But that's awesome that you are a teacher. Rachel says, that drives me nuts. And Nietzsche says, they see the value in what you do. It's a compliment and their hearts are in the right place. But yet, yeah, it gets old. And it really does. Like, how many times have you heard someone be like, you need to open an Etsy shop. You should sell these. It's like, I wish you only knew that like 10,000 other people also sell baby birth cloths. So... I would have a hard time selling mine on Etsy. So, but that brings me, so yes, so I, I know we've gotten way off the train, but if you haven't read about Lisa Vaughn, the meteorologist at Houston, Fox 26, definitely do so. I love her passion and her enthusiasm. Oh yeah, and she's younger. So hopefully people like Lisa, every time there's a story about someone like her, every little bit helps and that will help dispel all of those stereotypes that are just not, not at all true. So I was excited to see Lisa. I started following her. Her Instagram stories are very entertaining. Of course, she loves cats. And uh, she's, I really enjoyed her TV spy Skype because I really felt she addressed a lot of those questions that people, like the telltale questions people always ask. So I know in my business, a lot of people look at TV spy and I shared that like crazy all over Facebook this week. I probably shared like three or four articles about Lisa alone. Um, and it's not to try to like throw it in someone's face, but I just feel like the more we share that type of content with the friends and families and people we know in our life, that will help people to get a more accurate vision of what sewing is. So that's why I think it's great to see people like Lisa going a little bit viral. Oh, and the thing she went viral about was that she um, made a cloud dress. She's a meteorologist. Oh, and she's like super smart too. She has, like, degrees in, like, statistics and, like, science. So she is really, like, the full gamut. She's, like, the trifecta of everything. She, co she codes programs. Like, she does things that I couldn't even dream about doing. And she's extremely pretty. She's got a lot going on for herself. And I think, you know, like, she looks great in all of the clothes she wears. But she saw Savannah Guthrie on the Today Show wearing a uh, dress, a cloud dress, and she's like, I can't afford designer clothes. So she actually found some fabric on Etsy that was cloud print, bought it, and made it. And she dispelled a lot of uh, also stereotypes. She did a blog post that I linked below in the description box. Uh, people think that, and I've noticed this is true of my business, um, I am not on air. My background is more as a television producer, writer, web web producer. And the, the first thing you always get people asking is, are you on TV? And then they're like, oh, when are you going to be on TV? I'm like, well, I'm not going to be on TV. Uh, I guess this is my TV show here. So I've got I've got sewing report. But a lot of people in my business um, have never wanted to be on air, nor do we plan to try to be on air. A lot of, you know, for every one person you see on TV, there's like 15 to 20 other people doing things that are necessary to to get the newscast on. So I've been a producer for the bulk of my career, and I've lived in a lot of places, and Lisa really pointed out one thing that people assume. People assume that if you're on TV, you make a lot of money, which is not at all true. I can personally attest to that from my first few jobs. Doherty, thank you so much. She says, I really like to watch your TV show. And the reason I did this was because, again, there was a lack of sewing. There's a lack of sewing entertainment or sewing programming. And I really felt like this, especially this live show, it's a good way for us to be able to talk about things and just share ideas and share opinions. There really isn't a good forum for the sewing community. Like there's like message boards and Facebook groups, but some of the Facebook groups I get in, they can get a little brutal. So I don't know. I just, I don't know. It just, I've, I've kind of backed away out of a few Facebook groups just because I'm like, some of the conversations here are just not, not something I want to be a part of. So hopefully this can be a positive place for us all where we can talk and, you know, just share what we're thinking. So that's what this is. This is a conversation with you guys. And I like, um, I really, I've been really enjoying this and I want to thank everyone for watching because this has truly been a blessing for me as well. So we're going to try to do this every, every Sunday. Although at the end, I'm going to have some announcements about some upcoming weeks where there's going to be a few changes just because life, life happens. So let me show you some of the stuff I've been making. Um, 
And, and I am going to share some tips. This is not going to be just, you know, me blabbering on. So I've been, I've actually been doing some sewing, but it's been mostly gifts. Um, although this is sort of for me, this is selfish sewing. So these are, um, Marie says, I look forward to your Sunday show. Thank you so much. I really enjoy doing it. And uh, these, all right, so these are some reusable sandwich bags that I made. Um, there's really not a pattern. I just cut some, I used some laminated cotton, and this is the print Modern Minis, Modern Mini Arrows. It's by Lori Holt. And I linked some of the fabric down. They don't have the laminate version, but they've got the cotton version. So I wanted... So the deal was, I've been bringing, um, I'm really cheap, and that's something you should know about me. I will spend money where it counts, but on a day-to-day -day basis with my random home life, I'm, both James and I are pretty frugal. So I have been making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch, for work, freezing them, and then taking them to work. And by the time I get there, they, like, thaw out, and then I can, can eat them in their room temperature. But, um... I was afraid of them getting smushed in the bag. That is laminated fabric champagne twist indeed. So I kind of made up these reusable bags. You can use them for sandwiches or snacks or I guess whatever. And the outside is laminated cotton and the inside is uh, called PUL fabric. It's mostly made for like baby diapers, but I thought this would be a good choice. All right, Patty says, who gets so, so easy PBS show in the area? We don't here in Atlanta. I wish I did though. You know, I haven't seen that show. It sounds cool, and I don't get it. I don't know. I guess I'm not up at the times where these shows are on, but that sounds pretty cool. So the inside of this is uh, PUL fabric, and all I did was um, I cut out two pieces of fabric, 8 by 16. Oh, and then in the middle is something called Insulbrite, which is what they use in, like, hot pads or, like, oven mitts, and you can usually get it by the yard it's um polyester batting and then it's got a layer of something that will conduct heat I guess so I put that in the middle and I cut the insole right at 7 by 15 and I talk a little bit more in depth about what I did on my Instagram account if you follow me there I'm at sewing report but I sort of um just did right you know right sides together sewed it left an opening turned it and then uh top stitched around and then I just folded part of it up and then stitched on the sides, and then I added these cam snaps. So the bags are washable, um, they're kind of waterproof, and hopefully they will keep my PB and J sandwiches from getting smushed around in my bag. So I think these turned out pretty okay, I think. Um, have you ever made reusable sandwich bags? I saw a bunch of Pinterest tutorials, but in the end I kind of went with my own thing. Um, I didn't want to use Velcro, um, because if I'm washing them, I was afraid that the Velcro would get, like, hung up on other stuff, like the, the tackier part. So I felt with the cam snaps, it'll be a little more washer dryer friendly. Um, although I, I don't know if I'm going to put these in the dryer. I may just wash them and then wash them on cold and then air dry them. But I was wondering if I could use P. Well fabric for that type of application. Patty, I did, so... Why not, I guess? Um, I will I will report back, though, and let you know how these um, pan out, though. I'm going to try to, and I think this is a good size for my sandwich. And even though the sandwiches are frozen when I'm putting them in, as they get softer and more room temperature, they could get smushed. So I just wanted them to be not smushed. So that's why I added the um, Insulbrite in there, just as, like, a little bit of a layer of protection. I don't know. All right, so the next thing... I made is okay so I have a lot of people I know are having babies so I've been trying to caught, get caught up on gifts and I've been keeping a list of who I need to make gifts for so I made this little baby burp cloth set with a baby bandana for someone who had a little boy and you may recognize this fabric these are the target sheets that I can't seem to use up these are 100% organic um, cotton sheets from Target. I've used them to make two dresses, this. Um, so this was, oh, you know what? And I forgot, I apologize, I forgot to link the um, tutorial. But if you, the best thing you can do is go to Pinterest and just type in baby bandana pattern. And you'll get like a gazillion of them. So you can pick the one you like the best. So I just did this, turned it, sort of, that's the thing I like about sewing is right sides together, sew, leave an opening, turn it, press and top stitch. But I think this turned out pretty good and I put some cam snaps 
on it. Cam snaps are like my new favorite thing ever. I do have a video where I talk more about cam snaps and do a little demonstration. So if you're not familiar, you can you can check that out. So the baby bandana turned out okay, and then these burp cloths, these are actually just uh, cloth diapers. So I just use cloth diapers. Patty says, my only baby is 17, but not even my niece and nephews are under the age of 11. Wow, that's a pretty big, uh, got a lot of wide range of ages in your family, Patty. That's awesome. So this burp cloth is basically just a Gerber cloth diaper. And then I made a template, and I'm going to be talking more about templates, but I like to make, if it's a pattern I think I'm going to be making a lot, I will make a template for it. So I measured, I measured the opening. So I measured like how wide this was and then how long this was. And then I made a template that exact size. And uh, this is my burp cloth template. See, it's real, real official here. And I cut this out of something called Stiffy. It's an alternative to uh, Peltex, but it's way cheaper. It's like you can get a 35 yard roll for like $40 and you order it from this like small company in North Carolina. If you Google Stiffy, it should come up. Um, Stiffy like stabilizer, but so I cut the template out of this and then all I did was cut fabric that was a little bit larger than it and then folded it over and then pressed it so that I had my, you know, my fabric perfect, the perfect size. And then I actually used Elmer's washable school glue to baste this to the burp cloth and then I top stitch it. So it's pretty, it's a pretty easy, simple project and it looks cute. It's basically, you're just, you're just kind of jazzing up some of these burp cloths and that's pretty cool. So I've made these quite a bit. Um, I bought a 10 pack of these for like, I don't remember how much it was, $12. Okay, Doherty says, Sew for Home is a great place to find patterns. I got an apron. You can see it on my Instagram. That's awesome, Doherty. And Doherty, what's your Instagram handle? I'm not sure if I have it, but if I don't, I will look it up. So, yeah, so these are my little burp claws, and this is going to be a little set. Um, I won't name the recipient yet, although I'm sure they probably don't watch this show, because uh, I don't know if they really know I sew, but we're going to be giving this to someone as a surprise. And then lastly, um, I'm going to Doherty... Krayberg. Okay, I'm going to look you up and see if I'm following you. If not, I'm going to follow you. And the last thing I made is a little baby blanket. And this is one of my... I've made a lot of baby blankets before, but this one actually is one of my favorites. Um, all I did was cut... the. This is from two individual yards of fabric, and this is a print that's kind of... I don't know if they're really selling this anymore. It's called Riley Blake Saltwater. I did find one print that you can get on um, Amazon. Doherty, I am trying. I am trying. I've got another video coming out, I think, next week where with an outfit I made for myself. I'm really trying. But this is an out-of-print line called Saltwater. And it's like fish, water. There's like a mermaid print. There's seahorses. And this one is seahorses and then like swordfish. They're very cute. And I love this color. So all I did was... Um, put my fabric right sides together and this was about um, I think the cut ended up being like 27 inches by like 42 or something 42 or 43 and I apologize I think I've got a hair on my nose that's driving me crazy so I just put it right sides together and then I put a layer of batting with it um, then stitched around left an opening I know this is a common theme with me and then turned it right side out and then I did two lines of top stitching and I think that actually looked really nice um, so it kind of keeps the batting in place. And then I, I always, um, I don't pre-wash my fabric before I'm making blankets, but I wash it after I'm done making it. Hello, it's Marie. We've got another Marie. I'm so late. I bet I've missed loads. Marie, that's okay. That's what the replay is for. So whatever you miss here, you can watch again later on once this is just a regular video. So don't feel like you're missing out. And happy Mother's Day to you if you, if you have kids. Champagne twist. That blanket is so cute. Thank you very much. I really like this fabric. I think it's very cute and I have the mermaid print too. So hopefully that will, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the mermaid print. I have one yard left of this blue water fish fabric and then I got two yards of the mermaid print and the mermaid print is, it's this color but it just has mermaids instead of some other stuff. It's adorable and I think, that, I forgot what the designer's name is but, um, 
I did find her on Instagram and I just love these designs. I think they're so super cute. And um, this blanket turned out really good. I, this is going to be for a baby boy for a baby shower I'm going to next week. And a while back I bought these labels from, I think it was called like labels and ribbons or something. But I made a label for one of the corners. So I just stitched that on. So I think this looks okay here. I'll kind of bring it closer. This says more approved. So, and I wanted to ask you guys something. I'm going to get more labels made just because more approved is like my old blog name. We still have the blog and actually that's where James is making his cooking videos now. But I want to make some new labels that more reflect just who I am and, you know, more of a handmade vibe. Um, Anitra, thank you so much. And thank you, Marie. So I'm trying to figure out what I want the labels to say. I've been looking at some other sewing bloggers like Dana from Made Every Day. She has labels that just say made on them and I think they're super cute. Um, I don't know if I want to get labels that say sewing report that, I don't know, it doesn't seem like very like designer or chic. So maybe something else, but I'm not sure what I'm going to have the labels say. But um can James make, Ken wants to know, can James make a gourmet PB&J sandwich? Uh, Ken, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if James um, has ever really, I don't think he really does PB&J. Um, but <laughs> I'm sure you could make it gourmet somehow if you use like truffle oil or bacon. Actually, bacon would be great. And I think he just got back from the store too. He's going to make some videos. I think he's going to do one about guacamole, um, burritos, and maybe some turkey burgers. Those are the things he told me he was going to try to make uh, when we were talking this morning. So we're both trying to... Okay, so Marie says, I think the name more has to appear. That is... That might... What if I just do more? Um, I don't know. Although that wouldn't... I kind of want it to reflect sewing report. I'm not... I'm not sure. So we'll see. Dora, Doherty says, my labels have just my name. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Um, but I'm going to have to think about it because if I get labels, like, I have, like... I still have, like... A hundred of these more approved labels. I mean, do you guys like more approved? I don't know. Like, should I just keep these? I mean, I feel like I want some new ones though. So more. I like that. Okay, so so more. I mean, would it be bad to have labels that say sewing report? Like, I feel like that would be like the name of a show. Like, you putting like Big Bang Theory on a quilt or something. I don't know. So I have like tons of these labels still left. Okay, so M. Gilbert says, I love more approved. And backstory James actually came up with the name more approved um like his original idea was like like if we say it's more approved it's like check mark you know like we're telling you it's it's we like it um you know like so it's more approved you know like like this message has been approved by Hillary Clinton or you know like something like that so more okay so we've got some good suggestions I'm gonna have to think about it and I've been sewing the labels on just like this and then using the top stitching as a guide but then I saw that a lot of people are folding them inwards and sewing them that way. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to have to think about it. All right, Dana's here. Hello, Dana. She says, more approved, keep more approved. So we've got a lot of people saying keep more approved. So, but if I do get new labels, what, should they say the same thing? Or should they say, so more approved? Okay, that's a good suggestion. I'm, I'm going to have to think about it. And all right, this is going to sound really dorky. And I have another channel with this name. When I was a teenager, my screen name on America Online, Amer America Online, do you remember that, AOL? So my screen name was Mint Green Skies, just all one word. I really liked that made-up word. Okay, Anitra says maybe get a few with a couple of slogans. That might be a good idea. But in my mind, if I were to ever start up an Etsy shop, it would be called Mint Green Skies. Um, I've got the Mint Green Skies handle on social media. And for some reason, I just really like the way that sounds. I think that sounds like an Etsy shop. Georgina's here from Saskatchewan. Wow. Well, that's crazy. Welcome, Georgina. And Georgina, I actually do know where Saskatchewan is. Um, I know Regina, and I know there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of things happening in Saskatchewan. So, Mink Green Sky sounds great. And that's the thing, like, if I was going to start, like, selling stuff or whatever, I would, I feel like Mink Green Sky sounds like a cute name for, like, I don't know, baby stuff or like cute home decor. I don't know what I would sell if I had an Etsy shop. Um, and I think I actually did on my Etsy account. I, like a long time ago, when I was first started sewing. Okay, we have a few more Canadians. We've got Kate from British Columbia. Wow. 
Okay, so hello, Canada. I love Canada, by the way, and uh, I love Justin Trudeau, and uh, I'm a big fan. So I'm, I'm so jealous that you guys have a prime minister that is Justin Trudeau. He's just like the coolest guy ever. Um, not to mention he has awesome hair and he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's easy on the eyes. Let's be honest here. Hi, Justin. You know, whenever you see him, you're like, man. So anyways, I'm not going to get into that, but yeah, Justin Trudeau, PM of Canada. Love the guy. So anyways, I don't know what we were talking about, but, um, I, a while back I actually did, um, get like the name mint green skies for an Etsy shop. When I first started sewing I, in my head, like everyone else, I was like, maybe I could start an Etsy shop. So I think I have mint green skies as a shop name. Exactly. Champagne twist. I love the name. Like that was my screen name. Like, and I have a back in the day, like I guess in 2006 when YouTube was like first, I started a YouTube channel in 2006 and never really did anything with it. I uploaded my college roommate's wedding, one of a little video from her wedding, and then I didn't really do anything else with it. And that channel is named, it's got the URL, Mint Green Skies. So if I ever started a second channel and dedicated it to like a business, it would be the Mint Green Skies channel. So I feel like everything's kind of aligning for me to do something with the name Mint Green Skies. Um, like maybe start like a children's clothing line, even though that would be kind of creepy because I don't have any kids, but you know, whatever, I don't know. But anyways, so yeah, back to the blanket. I am a big fan of this and I think the fabric is pretty cool looking and I would like to make more baby blankets. They're pretty easy projects and uh, I feel like whenever I'm making a baby item or like kids clothing, I just kind of feel happy doing it, especially since there are so many fun fabrics. And even though I am childless, I own a lot of fabrics with, like, child and, you know, prints meant for kids. So, but I do want to talk to you because when I'm making a lot of gifts or when I'm making an item over and over again, often I'm using the same pattern. So, one thing you can do, like, if you're finding you're making, like, like gifts, like burp cloths, if I get a free pattern or a template or a pay one, um, I will mounted onto cardboard like this so it's a little sturdier than just the paper pattern piece yeah so I'll show you a few of these and again these aren't the prettiest things but they definitely work I use I basically use any cardboard that comes in packaging like if I get a box I'll cut that open and use it to make templates um, I will I would actually like to you make some templates for some uh, quilting projects I've, I got sort of in my head so I will use cardboard or the other thing you can use and I'll show you this is um, flexible cutting boards. So this is a pattern, this is a template for, template slash pattern for a baby hat. And you make it out of knit fabrics and I think this was just a free tutorial or something. So because I figured I would be making baby hats fairly often, I cut the pattern piece out of this flexible cutting mat. And then on the back I use this something called handy and I've got it here, it's called Handy Quilter Handy Grip. And I've linked some flexible cutting mats and uh, Handy Grip down below in case you're interested. I use these cutting mats all the time for different things. Um, someone asks, what's my favorite baby gift to make? That's a tough question. I really like making quilts. I li love making quilts and I've made quilts as gifts before. Um, they're big enough so that you feel like you're accomplishing something, but they're not too huge that you're overwhelmed. So I feel like making baby quilts is something I really, and I like my favorite thing to do when sewing is to come up with the fabric um, schemes. What, like I love curating fabrics. It's one of my favorite things to do. So, but yeah, I've made clothing. Um, I've made sets with like little baby pants and then this hat and then I make it. In, and what I do is if I have like, like say I have like three yards of knit and I use two and a half to make a sweatshirt. The other half yard, I'm not going to get anything usable out of it for me. So I will use my leftover knit fabric to make baby gifts. So that's what you could do with your leftover knit fabric is make baby hats, make baby pants. Um, like this is a template for part of the this pattern called like pirate pants or something. Or yeah, I forgot. Pirate baby pants. And Champagne Twist says, I've made one quilt in my life, which my mom liked so much. I gifted her on Mother's Day. Champagne Twist, 
that's that's really cool and you today is Mother's Day so what an appropriate way to celebrate by gifting your mom with a quilt so yeah so if you are making the same items over all the time um, I like to make templates out of the pattern just so that you know it's easy for me to go to I don't have to keep printing out a PDF pattern all the time and then these are some of the things I use so these are I got these at Aldi, but you can get these like pretty much anywhere, the dollar store, whatever. And these are flexible, these are flexible plastic cutting mats. And I bought them for the purpose of using them as templates. So these, actually these I really like because they're kind of matte on this side. And then they've got a little bit of a grippy back. So I'm actually going to cut it out and then lay the grippy part in the fabric so it doesn't move around. But if you don't have these kind... Um, you can use this handy grip stuff, which is meant for rulers. You can use that on your template just so that, that when you're putting the pattern piece on your fabric, it doesn't slip and slide. So I will like, you know, put this down on my fabric and then use my rotary cutter to sort of cut around it. Obviously this part I've got to use scissors with, but for the most part this, these work pretty well. And I make uh, templates for some of my most used baby gift items and I'm sure all of you guys probably go to a lot of baby showers all right Ellie says any ideas for recently turned one year old boy um you know that's a good question um all right one year old boy oh right, and Georgina says I also have to say I think that your husband sewing is great thank you and yes we do have several videos where James is sewing so you can check those out one year old boy I did see a pattern um I think it was called like Fresh Stitch. Okay, so I got some patterns recently on a crazy sale from, Fr I think it's called Fresh Stitch Patterns or Little Stitch Patterns. And they had some, um, they had some patterns for like pants, kids pants. And a lot of these baby patterns, they go up sizes. So maybe you could make the little baby, like it's a one year old, so it's not really going to know what much is yet. You could make a, there is a tent top for a card table, which is awesome. Very cool. You can make um, like a little outfit for the for the boy, uh, maybe out of some fun fabrics. And you know who's going to love that? Mom, because she can take a lot of cute pictures of the one-year-old in the cute outfit. Whistle Creek or something to that effect is Anitra. Thank you, Anitra. So that's what I would recommend is um, since a one-year-old, like if you made it like a handmade toy, the kid's not old enough to really realize what it is yet. They might play with it, but... I think maybe, maybe some baby clothes, maybe some, um, what if you got like a little baby onesie and maybe applicated the kid's initial on it, maybe on the front, or added like a little bow tie. I've seen some Pinterest tutorials and adding like a, like a bow tie applique to the neckline, and then you make some matching pants. What about something like that? I think that would be cool, and it would be something that, um, that the baby's mom would really appreciate. And definitely show off. She'd probably post some pictures on Facebook with the outfit. And that's something that I think she would really appreciate. Because you could get a lot of really, you know, moms, I, from, from what I gather, they love taking pictures of their kids in cute outfits. So if you give the kid a cute outfit, she's going to take a picture of it. Or you can make like a cute, what if you made the kid, like I've seen some patterns for like cute hats. What if you make the kid one of those like cool, um, I don't know if they're Panama hats, but like a, uh, like, I'm not talking like a knit hat, but like a kind of a stiffer, like a, like, like kind of a bucket, like a bucket hat for the baby. That could be sort of cool, too. And again, it's something, it's a cute accessory. Moms love to show off their kids' latest cute clothes. So I think that would be cool. All right, Doherty says, there's a pattern company in Finland called Audubre. They send out three children's magazines each year and make great clothes for boys. That's a good suggestion. Thank you so much, Doherty. And if anyone else has some suggestions on gifts for a one-year-old boy, feel free to chime in. Obviously, I don't know much about it personally, but um, but when I've made anything for babies, it's been it's been pretty well received. So Ellie, hopefully your project comes out well. But I think there's a lot of options you have, and the good thing is that there are so many free tutorials and patterns for babies that you might not even have to buy a pattern. You could probably find. Oh, and I've also seen. I saw some cute um, tutorials online. You could make like little bow ties for, for kids. So what if you made the kid like a little cute bow tie? Um, so then when the mom is wearing, you know, putting him in a little shirt, he's got like an adorable little bow tie. And you could do the hat. So 
I mean, you really, you could make, or you know what would be cool, and I don't know if there's a pattern for this, a baby blazer. You know, like, so you could make the, you could make the kid look like he's some sort of, like, business executive. I think that would be kind of adorable. Um, all right, Patty says she's got to go. She will catch the, all right, Patty, good to see you here, and happy Mother's Day to you. But yeah, I think it would be kind of funny to get like a little baby suit pattern. See, you're making the kid look like he's some sort of CEO. Get a little briefcase. I think that would be sort of adorable. I would love to see an Instagram account where they dress up babies like adults all the time. I think that would be funny. I would I would follow that. All right, Ellie says bow tie hat combo matching vest. Oh yes, matching vest. He'll be looking fly. Then he'll get some ladies. You know. I mean, that's all all he needs at, one, at at the age of one, right, is just look and fly, you know, and then the mom can make, take some really awesome pictures, especially if it's for a birthday. Maybe, maybe the kid can wear it as like a special cute outfit, you know, take some professional photos, that sort of thing. But yeah, I think, I think we're getting some suggestions here. So that is cool. And I'm going to try to wrap this up early as well, because I know 45 minutes in, um, I can talk forever pretty much, so, um... All right, Dana, love how you keep referring to the child as the kid. Too funny. And Dana, that's the thing. Um, even though I make a lot of baby items, I have, like, next to no experience with babies. I have changed one diaper in my life, and that was, like, a friend's kid. And I, I'm an only child. I just have not really been around babies ever, really. I think they're cute. Um, I'm always afraid that I'm going to drop the kid, though. Like, I'm terrified that if I hold a baby, that something would happen to it, and then I would be responsible. And that's kind of a nightmare scenario for me. I don't like to think about that sort of thing. But I, in my mind, I'm always thinking worst-case scenario. I did do a little babysitting as a teenager, but it was for, like, kids that were, like, 5 to 10. Um, Ellie says, I don't have kids either. Yes, making baby things is awesome. And you feel like you can, I don't know, you just feel like you can accomplish so much. Because it takes so little material um, to make kids' clothes. So that's why I've actually been enjoying making kids' clothes. And in fact, I'm, I'm actually making another... I, my, my current project is also a dress for a kid. So I will be showing that off on Instagram, hopefully, when it's done. And, but that's also for a gift. So I'm making a lot of gifts and not really doing a lot of selfish sewing this month, except for the sandwich bags. But this is really to benefit the sandwiches um, so that they don't die in transit. But I, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to keep these shows at an hour just because I know you guys have a life and you have other stuff to do. And plus I don't want the um, the iPod to die again. Ellie says pillowcase dresses are popular on Pinterest. And Ellie, I would agree with you. The only thing I don't like about the pillowcase dresses that I've seen is that a lot of them have ribbons as ties. And I feel like to me that doesn't seem like very secure and it I don't know. I, I, I'm okay with the pillowcase dresses, but I kind of like to take it up a notch and make, like, more more legit clothing for the kids. So, I've made a few children's items, but I like my, I don't know, like, the ribbon tie just seems like it might not be the most um, sturdy thing. Like, something that will look nice in photos, but in the reality of it, I feel like it would get untied and then the dress would fall down or something. Is it just me or am I crazy? I don't know. But... Anyways, I do have an announcement. So next week, I am going to a baby shower at this time period. So we're going to move the show for next week to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I should be home by then. I know, I know. but And I'll let you guys, I'll get, I'll let you guys know how the baby shower goes and how the gift was received. So that's will, that will be next Sunday. So next Sunday, the show will be at 4.30. I'm trying not to change the time around a lot. But it's got to happen next week because I'm not going to be home in time. Doherty says, that is awesome. I have seven grandchildren and, yes, always something to sew. All right, Doherty, that's a lot of grandkids. So next week the show is going to be at 4.30. And then the week after, I actually have to work that weekend. I just found out. So I have – someone actually suggested this to me, my friend Vintage on Tap, at Vintage on Tap on Instagram. Um, since I won't be able to be doing the show at all on Sunday – I'm going to leave you a little taped show instead. So I'm going to pick like a topic, like a topic that would make good conversation, you know, like the NBC buying crafts or like the meteorologist who sews. So the weeks that I'm not able to do the show, I'm going to tape my kind of thoughts about a certain issue and then leave it to you guys in the comments 
to continue the conversation. So how does that sound to you guys watching here? Does that sound like a good alternative for the weeks that I'm not able to be here live with you? If that's cool with you, let me know. Give me the thumbs up and, uh, you know, smash the like button. Let me know if that's cool with you. But hopefully, yes, because I don't want to not have a show at all. But at the same time, sometimes, some weeks, it's just not going to happen. There's also a week in June that I'm probably going to be gone as well. So I think planning ahead, the weeks that I'm not able to be here, um, it's going to be more of a conversation, but just not as much in real time. Uh, it's going to be something, you know, like a, like a three to five minute video. I'll say hi to you guys and talk about my thoughts about whatever it is. And then in the com the comments will be our conversation and I'll be able to comment, but I just won't be able to be there live. So, all right, everybody seems cool with that. So I think that's the plan because I don't want to not have a show. So I want every Sunday there to be something. Champagne Twist says, sounds great. Hope you have a great time at the baby shower and don't stress about doing the show every week. It's supposed to be fun for you too. That is true. And I got a thumbs up from Taishia. So thank you guys so much, and I'm going to sign off because um, I tried to call my mom earlier for Mother's Day, and I got her voicemail, so I'm going to try to call her back now. And I want to wish you all a happy Mother's Day, and if you don't have these uh, flexible cutting mats yet, definitely give them a shot because they are great for template making, and I will see you guys next week at 4.30. All right, bye.